Hello Booktube, this is Aaron from Aaron Read, Read a Book or Aaron Read a Book. Um, I might change my channel name to all of that put together just to confuse people. Um, I, I'm back from my Booktube inspired holiday to Germany um, after reading A Time of Gifts. Uh, I booked myself holiday to Germany and I've been hiking around Heidelberg and Freiburg, which ironically aren't even in the time of gifts, but it, it gave me the idea, and um, it was it was an amazing place, really. Or oh, both amazing places. Um, uh, I'm I'm proper tired now, though, from all the hiking. It wasn't really a holiday; it was it was more exercise. Um, but yeah, both really beautiful medieval towns with um, lots of cheap beer and crazy people in them it was a lot, a lot of fun um if i do a bit of a wrap up for may um i've read seven books i think which is pretty good going for me uh, especially when, since one of them was middle march um so we'll start with that i'll i'll, I'll rattle through these first three pretty quickly because i've already talked about them on the channel so first book i read was middle march big chunkster um yeah, I mean, you all know what Middlemarch is. It's about a English village told from the perspective of all the the inhabitants and the sort of essential romance. Well, a couple of central romances, really. Um, I really loved it. Um, some people struggle with it. It, is a bit, it took a bit getting into, but I, I loved it. I think it's well worth pursuing. And, um, yeah, the last sort of 400 pages that you can fly through. Uh, yeah, so Middle March, great one. Uh, then I read um, Murder on the Lynx. <laughs> Murder on the Lynx, Agatha Christie. Not my favourite, um, but, you know, it's Agatha Christie. Can't really go wrong, still still fun. Um, and then th this is a new author to me, um, Ellis Peters, who I actually thought was a man, but it's a woman. Um, the Brother Cabfail Mysteries. I, I only read the first one in this. This is the first three. Um, I really like this. Definitely going to read some more um, medieval sort of monk mystery. Um, Brother Cabfail himself was a crusader, so he's got a bit more sort of world experience than the rest of the monks. And he takes some some of the youngsters under his wing and stuff. Um yeah, so the first one they go to get some bones of a saint um, for their monastery and there's basically one guy standing in the way of them getting these bones and he turns up murdered. Um, so the monks are sort of slightly under suspicion um, but there's also sort of a love story going on with his daughter. So... Um, there's also suspicion on the potential lover of her daughter. So, um, Brother Cabfail steps in and he's like, a, they're in Wales and he's Welsh, so he's he's the only one who can speak, speak Welsh. And um, he sort of becomes a little local legend with them, goes out boozing with all the locals. Um, and, well, solves the mystery, doesn't he? Spoiler alert. But yeah, really like that. Um, I'll definitely crack on with the some more of those, maybe in March Mystery Madness next year. Um, next up, I haven't spoken about this one. Um, this is Elizabeth Jane Howard's Casting Off, which is the fourth book in her Caslet Chronicles, which are a series of books. They start in 1937, I think, and the first one. And it it follow, it's like a big farm big family big family saga um following three generations of this family of the timber merchants um in England just before the war by the time this one we get to this one this is the third the, this is after the war that's just finished um and by now in the series is mostly focused on the third generation it's actually four generations by this point because some of them have started having kids but 
um, basically the third generation uh, of three young girls, mostly. It follows mostly these three young girls, and Elizabeth Jane Howard was a teenager at this time in real life, so I think, and I think her family were timber merchants as well, so it's quite autobiographical. Um, yeah, and if you've never read any Elizabeth Jane Howard, I highly, highly recommend it because I'd never see her spoken about on BookTube. Um, but she was brilliant. Um, she was married to Kingsley Amos for a long time, and it was actually Martin Amos who really recently died who sort of suggested she start writing these books. She she basically said, "Shall I write book A or this book about a family?" And he was like, "Oh yeah, do that one." Um, but he, she also helped him a lot in his writing career when he was first getting started and, and encouraged him a lot. But she, she's a much better writer than Martin Amos or Kingsley Amos, um, in my opinion. And I, I, I like Kingsley Amos a lot. Um, um, yeah, she's writes beautifully. And if you like sort of big family circles, this one's 600 pages, I think. Um, and they're all quite chunky. Um, you can't really go wrong with her. She's she um, she's got a wonderful sort of prose style. Um, it's hard to explain. Um, but yeah, so the these three girls by this point are in their sort of late teens, early twenties, and they're going into the world and getting jobs and one of them's married uh, quite unhappily some of the parents marriages are falling apart some new relationships are, are coming into place um, this one's really about first loves and and um, how they can go right or wrong um, and how they affect their lives so some some of them do get together with their first love and some don't um, yeah, it's just beautifully written. I, I, there's only one more left of these. Um, this one was probably originally going to be the last one because she wrote the first four within five years and then she wrote the last one 18 years later when she was in her 90s, just before she died. So, yeah, absolutely love Elizabeth Jane Howard. Highly recommend her, especially if you like things like um, Elena Ferrante. Like, she's better writer than Ferrante, and she does children just as well as her. But yeah, love love these. Um, next up, what did I read? Next up, I read um, One Day All of This Will Be Yours by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Um, I'll try and put a picture up here. Um, yeah, Adrian Tchaikovsky is a really good modern sci-fi writer um i don't read a lot of sort of current sci-fi but i love him and he seems to churn out about two or three books a year and they're always quite good they they always have some nice sort of deep sci-fi tropes in them this one was a bit more silly it's um about this guy who's basically the world has ended and and he's the only person left alive um and basically the fourth world war was fought with time machines and all these sort of time machine warriors were going back in time and and changing each other's history and stuff so eventually the timeline became shattered and there's only him left and he sort of sits at the end of time on a farm that he's 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 created like a 19th century farm and he just he has pet dinosaurs robotic dinosaur that he waits he sort of set a law so when anyone invents time machines in any of the old timelines they will ar arrive there and then he feeds them to his dinosaur um so he thinks that that's how the world is going to end it's just him and then one day two guys, two people turn up and they're like, oh, we're your descendants um, from the future. And he's like, oh, well, there is no future. And then they sh they show him 
they take him to the future and there's like statues of him and stuff and he's like well I'm never going to let this happen because it will just lead to another a war so he he sort of sets out not for that future to happen uh, and then the, this woman arrives who's obviously who they call the grandmother who is who's his wife and they basically like he's like well this future's not going to happen so I'm going to kill it like I kill all the other time travellers but she is she's um, she was born in the future and she's like oh I don't want to marry you anyway so I'm going to try and kill you and then they the book's basically them trying to kill each other and going back in time and messing with each other and raising armies and stuff it's, it's really fun um, but yeah if you've ever read any Adrian Tchaikovsky before you'll know he does sort of silly ones and then he does really sort of more in-depth ones like Children of Time um, everyone's favourite spider book um, yeah I highly, I highly recommend him but this is just a short silly one um, next I read The Last Unicorn by Peter Beagle so this is one that's been in my radar for like 10 years and I, I don't know why I've never picked it up I picked it up on Kindle um, I think for 99p or something um, so this is a, a 1960s fantasy classic and it's very much a fairy tale fantasy rather than elves and things so in this a unicorn is in, in the woods and unicorns are immortal and um, it overhears two people one day talking about how there's no unicorns left and the unicorn's like oh I haven't left my forest in hundreds of years I better go check and find out so she go she goes and um, gets captured by this sort of illusionist who who has like a, a traveling animal show but most of the animals are are not actually supernatural they're just illusions that she's she's putting on the audience but the only real ones are the unicorn which people can't actually see as a unicorn um for some reason so she still has to do the spells to just so people can sort of see the real unicorn and then there's a harpy as well who is not very happy um about being caged up and basically everyone in the book is like you've got a harpy uh i i am mad it's gonna it's gonna smash the place up and the witch is like yeah the harpy's definitely gonna kill me but it's good for the show um and spoiler alert the harpy does go mental um and they get out so then the unicorn goes on a quest with or continues its quest to find other unicorns um with a magician that was part of that traveling show who helps her escape um and they eventually come to this castle where the sort of rumors that this 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 guy is has got unicorns or, or knows where the unicorns are and there we meet prince lear who's um who falls in love with a unicorn who has now become turned into a um a human temporarily uh but yeah i won't i won't i won't give any more of the plot details but it's it's really i've never read anyone with his style before he's he's got a very interesting way of language which is really nice i can see why it's a classic um there was a cartoon made of this as well that looks really good. I'm going to definitely check that out. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it. But I do think I would have loved it even more if I read it when I was younger. Um, but it's always good to go back and, and read some of these books. Um, and it's still very enjoyable as an adult. So um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what else Beagle has done. I, I know he's done the second one, but I don't think he's got any other major works. But yeah, very nice book and very enjoyable use of language. Um, next I read The Painted Veil by W. Somerset Maugham. Um, I read this when I was in Germany. Um, 
I, 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 I've always been a big fan of Somerset Maugham, so when I was a teenager, one of my favourite books was The Moon and Sixpence, which is his um, sort of fictionalised life of Gauguin, and I sort of remember copying sentences out of it in, into into my notebook and stuff um when i was when i was in my early 20s it, it definitely impacted me a lot and then i also read also loved the the razor's edge which was um about a man who sort of shell shocked after world war 1 and he just rather than taking up a profession he just wants to read books um and I really like that as well. And Bill Murray bought the rights to that and made sort of a little art house film of it, which which not many people have seen. Um, but yeah, I love both of those books, but I haven't read either of them for a long time. So I, I was wondering if it would have the same impact. And when I started reading The Painted Veil, I thought, oh, I don't really like this. The The main character's horrible. So the, the main character is this this woman who... Is sort of very vain and um, and she comes from sort of wealth um, and she she marries this this guy this bacteriologist um, but not out of love she marries him because basically her sister's going to get married and she she's she's always been like the good looking one um, uh, and uh, so she felt under pressure when her sister was getting married to a lord or something. Um, so she just, just accepts, basically, the first guy who comes along. And this guy, the bacteriologist, is she finds him boring. And he he moves to Hong Kong, I think. Is that Hong Kong? Let me check. But he moves to China. Um, and she goes with him. And she's sort of very unhappy and she has this affair with this guy who runs the colony over there. Um, and But the, the her husband is actually like a great man. He's uh, very kind but he's very shy so she just sees it as boring. Yeah, so he, he finds out about the affair and decides to take them into like the middle of nowhere where this this cholera epidemic happening so he can be the doctor there and so she has to accompany him because the the guy she's having the affair with is like no way i'm leaving my wife um so they go this this whole time i'm thinking like i don't like this woman at all she's she's an idiot and vain and mean to a good man and then when they get to the um, place where there's the cholera ep epidemic, they meet some new characters, and basically it's run by these nuns, and they basically see her husband as a saint, and she starts working with the nuns and stuff. And there's so the whole story becomes sort of a story of redemption and of this main character. So. I, I was worried that I hated her, but I think that's the, the point of the novel. You're, you're with the vain person who discovers sort of deeper meaning through these nuns and through finding out actually her husband is a good man. Um, yeah, there was a film with Greta Garbo of this, and then there was a la later film in the 2000s at some point, I think. So I might watch one of those with... The, the the modern one has Edward Norton. Um, yeah, I might check those out. Um, but yeah, I, overall, not my favourite Somerset Maugham, but it, it redeemed itself as the character does, so um, still well worth reading. Um, lastly, I just finished Thank You Jeeves by P.G. Woodhouse. So Thank You Jeeves is the first of the Jeeves and Worcester books um, which is a series I deeply love and I have not been reading them in order at all I've, I've read some of the short stories that became came out before this and I really love his short stories they're, they're like he he's fits that format so well 
but I love a lot of the later novels as well. And I like the P. Smith and the Blandings ones as well. Um, Thank You Jeeves is basically um, the story of Jeeves leaving Bertie. I so say Bertie um, gets obsessed by this instrument. I think, I don't know if even it's a real instrument in real life. It's called the Banjolier or something. And basically all his neighbours are like kicking him out of London and, and Jeeves is like, okay, well, I'm handing him my notice. And Bertie gives him a sort of, or he gives Bertie an old meme. It's like, it's, it's the instrument or me. And of course, Bertie, being the, the idiot that he is, chooses the instrument. Um, and he, because he's getting kicked out of London, he decides to go move down to the country and um, play his instrument there. And Jeeves also gets a job on, in the same place um, with one of Bertie's friends. Uh, and there's lots of chaos in shoes it, it's, it's, it's a usual P.G. Woodhouse this, the plot doesn't make much difference it's just the wonderful language and um, and hilarious scenes yeah this is actually when when they when they started saying that they were going to edit P.G. Woodhouse I, I thought I can't remember anything controversial being in P.G. Woodhouse but this one does have some pretty controversial stuff by modern standards but um that doesn't get in the way of the enjoyment for me. I, I can see it in its context. Yeah, so that's May. Um, I have got some plans for some June reading in the works, but I won't go into those in detail, but I'm going to definitely be doing some Star Trek stuff and some June on the range stuff. Um, again, for me, I've seen a lot of people saying they hadn't read Westerns before June on the range started, and I... I hadn't really, apart from Lones and Dove, which which is probably my favourite book. Um, but it's great to see loads of people reading Lones and Dove this year as well, so we'll see how that goes. But um, I've got some stuff on order, but I'll probably make a video about that separately. I did have a tiny little haul as well, so I had two books come to me um, randomly. One of them I was out trying to buy safety pins. Um, because I ran a half marathon before I went on my hiking holiday, which was very stupid. Um, and I needed pins to pin my number to me. Um, and when I, when I was out, I picked up um, the hours. Um, so just from an, from the charity shop, I think it was the British Heart Foundation. Two quid bargain. So I've seen the film of this, and I love the film. And I've read Mrs. Dalloway. Um, I, I don't get on very well with Virginia Woolf, I... I struggle with her. I struggle with all stream of consciousness. Um, so I wonder how this will go. Um, Kelly's been raving about it a lot recently. So, And I've seen someone else read it recently as well. Um, I think it was Body Read, so that's probably why. Um, but yeah, this is a film cover, obviously. Um, so that was a, just a random one while I was out. And then it was my birthday last week, so my mum sent me a book from New Zealand. And... It's beneath, I can't read backwards, beneath the heart of the sea, the sinking of the whale ship Essex. So this is um, the shipwreck that inspired Moby Dick. And Owen Chase was one of the guys actually on the ship. So um, I've read, what is it, Into the Heart of the Sea? The one that they made that film about, uh, which is a, a non-fiction, um, is it Nathan Philbrick? Um book about um, the sinking of the the Essex and and it's and it's about sort of Nantucket whale industry in, in, in general and I loved that that was really good so this would be interesting it's only really tiny it's 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 yeah so it's a first person account of the from one of the people actually on there so I'll, I'll probably read that at some point maybe non-fiction November um, but yeah, good choice by my mum. I don't know how she managed that one. Although we are from Essex, so she probably just saw Essex in the title. And I have recently been to a shipwreck museum, so she knows I like that sort of thing. Um, okay, well that's all I've got for today. Um, Booktube, this is going to be the longest book I've ever... Longest book, longest video I've ever done, so that's cool. Um, 
and hopefully I'll work out how to put up the old pictures up there. See you next time.